Was there ever a point where either of you were afraid for your lives or well-being? Because you're dealing with industries that make billions of dollars every year. The government's getting involved. There are a lot of rich, powerful people that have a lot of incentives for this to not come out. Was there ever a point where you were like, someone could just roll up on me walking from work or something, you know, take me? Because like journalists do get, you know, beat up occasionally or executed. Like there's a history of journalists getting uh, messed up. Well, well, Zach, Zach, we were more worried about the government, actually. They were trying to send us to prison. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we weren't. I I don't feel I, I don't ever remember feeling physically in danger or worried about my physical livelihood from fans. I mean, we got every possible piece of hate mail and horrible things said about us that you could. But I never remember feeling physically threatened. Mm. But as Lance said, the the concern became when the government decided that they were going to come after us and needed to know where we got our material. This was the contempt of court. Threat- yeah, that they were threatened. Yeah, basically, so they, you know, we published grand jury to the the grand jury testimony of a number of athletes. The judge decided she wanted an investigation into that after people complained about it. The FBI launched an investigation separately in Los Angeles into where we got our material. And that sort of created this drama and saga in which we were subpoenaed to come testify before a federal grand jury to say where we got our stuff. Lance and I both refused, of course, and um, and we were threatened with prison by, for up to 18 months. And so wow, we, that was that was the that was the biggest fear, I think, to our own personal livelihood that we felt during the. During no, the I did have a I mean, you know, we got all kinds of negative stuff from fans and I did have a, a personal encounter with a Barry Bonds fan that I that I I can't forget. I, Mark and I had been on some talk show in L.A., a sports talk show. Uh, and the next day I was on. BART, the uh, mass transit uh, train in the Bay Area, going to the Oakland Coliseum mm. to meet my son to go to an A's game. There was a guy on on uh, BART, and he was looking at me. And he was a pretty buff guy. And uh, as the train starts rolling into the Coliseum station, he goes, is it personal with you and Bonds? I didn't say anything. He says, it's personal, isn't it, between you and Barry? It's personal, isn't it? And so I got off and started walking down the platform, and he runs out of the train and starts yelling, Barry's not going down, you going down. So I thought that was, well, I don't know, it was kind of negative feedback, but he didn't lay hands on me. It is one reason why I didn't go to the Giants ballpark since this started, because I was always worried of winding up being on the Jumbotron and then getting trapped in my seat, you know. So the the government wanted to throw you in jail for up to 18 months, you said, for contempt of court, for not for not turning over the sources for the the grand jury testimony. True. Correct. Did anyone end up going to jail for this investigation? Like what was the longest someone went away? So it's a it's a bittersweet piece of the story for us. Um, so the, the the dealers themselves spent virtually no time in prison. Victor got uh, four months in prison and four months of house arrest. Jesus. Um, so you just spent Anderson more time in prison t- for not turning over the oh. information that led to the arrest. Oh, three when, times, when, three times. Zach, when more. we got in trouble, and, and, I was like, okay, I could do four months. I mean, Victor did four months. I could do four months. I thought there would be some you know, uh, uh, balance like that. But I remember our lawyer talking to me, he says, no, no, Lance, you don't understand. (laughs) They're going to put you away for 18 months and then they might come back and convene a new grand jury and try to put you away for another 18 months. There was no perspective Mm -hmm. like you'd think they would have. They act like, they acted like Mark and I had blown up a police station. I mean, they went after us so hard. (laughs) It was crazy. And Greg, you know, and nobody else. I mean, Greg, you know, Greg did three months in house arrest, then then three or three months prison, three months house arrest, and then the feds they ended up not from our from us helping them separately. They found another way to get to our sources, and they ended up charging a guy, 
And, uh, and he served, he was sentenced to two years in prison. So here was a whistleblower in the truest sense, providing information that helped expose these athletes. And the whistleblower ended up being sentenced to two years. He ended up serving 14 months, I think, and then was out on house arrest for another period of time, lost his law license. So that guy served more than two or three times the amount of time combined of any of the drug dealers in the case. And the athletes, of course, served well, no, no Barry time. did house arrest in Beverly Hills for a month. Yeah. Oh, Barry did, Barry did house arrest for 30 days in Beverly Hills. I, I That's would, right. I would for, take that. For his, That's a vacation. For his <laughs> deal like, that got, I'd volunteer yeah, for that. Yeah, that got overturned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so who was this guy that went away? Is this public information? The guy who ended up uh, that leaked the grand jury testimony? Yeah. So the the um, this the reporting is public, and and that uh, he's a lawyer named Troy Ellerman, who was a uh, um, a lawyer for one of the defendants in the case, and. Um, you know, I think what Lance pointed out very early on in the case that was so frustrating was, I think the reason Lance thought he'd be off this case so short mm. is that when the government indicted indicted these guys for dealing the drugs, he thought that all the athletes would be identified, the drug users would be identified, we'd know who did what and when. Instead, when the government ident- I indicted everybody, the four guys who were dealing the drugs, they redacted the names of all of the athletes. They protected the identity of all of the athletes. Mm. And so I think a lot of people around the case, not just us, were like, what the fuck is going on? Why are they protecting all of the athletes? They're treating this as if it's a normal drug case uh, in which they're going after the dealers as opposed to the users. In reality, the users in this case were the famous athletes, some of the most famous athletes in the world, and, uh, and they were being protected and sheltered. And so we had a number of sources who worked with us because they felt like that was fucked up and wrong. Yeah. And, um, and Ellerman has publicly talked about being one of those people. Um, and, and in, I think both of our minds, he's a whistleblower in the truest sense of what, what whistleblowers do and are. And unfortunately he got caught and, uh, and the government brought the full force of the government down on him, and, and he suffered for it considerably. What is it that makes the government go after the whistleblowers harder than the people who are actually committing the crime? Because it, it, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like it, Once the information is out there and you refuse to leak your source, you know, it's kind of on whoever was in charge of that information – to keep a better eye on it or, or not give it out there. Like they're taking the risk, but, w- but once you get your hands on that information and, and it is evidence of a widespread scandal, it seems like it would be in the government's best interest to want to go after these guys uh, who are committing the crime. And the, you know, there, there's a lot, I know there's a lot of people that suffer as whistleblowers who come out and say things that are, you know, the illegal shit's going on things are not what they seem and you know they they get fucked a lot of times it seems like i mean we need many things in the united states but one thing we need is legislation that protects whistleblowers uh better than it is now because the act of whistleblowing sometimes requires somebody to do something procedurally wrong or bad or forbidden but there's a overarching good being performed, I think. That's what we thought in our case. I mean, like Mark says, when they indicted Victor, they could have laid out in general terms who who was the who his clients were. I mean, uh, uh, instead of rewriting court records to refer to Barry Bonds as a baseball player, for example, or just blacking stuff mm-hmm. out, just just tell us what's going on here. It was the only thing that interested yeah. the ordinary people in the case to begin with is what were the athletes doing? 